Um, yeah, uh, for today's session, um, I'm Usultan Hassana will present from UX Army as a UX consultant, uh, together with uh, Melissa that we have in the live demonstration. So uh, actually, I'm not really sure how we how will we conduct for today's session because like uh, since we need to uh, do like comparison between UX Army platform and with Soro, we'll present about the Alchemer version. So what about it, Aharis? I mean, shall, should I start uh, for the UX Army version first or how? Uh, Soro is here, Soro. Can you take over and uh, give the introduction? Hi, I am. Uh, so okay, I'm supposed to do the comparison part. Um, so, I mean, when it comes to introduction, what am I supposed to introduce here? I am not sure because um, Uswa is supposed to go through the card sorting part of uh, UX Army. So I guess we can start with the uh, UX Army version okay. for the introduction and the slides. And then uh, Soro can uh, jump in the middle while comparing. Yes. Okay, then let me start. Okay, sorry. Okay, uh, let me start. So yeah, like what I have uh, mentioned before that today is a card sorting session. And uh, yeah, this is the view. I think you all already show this uh, view as, uh, our, in our website for your ex army website. And this is today's agenda. So we'll talk about why uh, why do we need to use like your, your uh, card sorting test and this for creating the card sorting. We'll show you also our dashboard in uh, our platform and the test creation as well. And live demonstration, we'll, we'll show you the few point of uh, as a researcher and also the respondents uh, point of view from Melissa side. And also we'll show you the test report, both for uh, downloaded report as well as online report. So let me start. Uh, this is some like uh, the basic things that we need to realize for the card sorting test. Like when we want to conduct a card sorting test, if we want to like organize the information structure, for our website or application that we are uh, developing. And of course, it's uh, close to the user's man, mind, mindset and expectation. And also to understand uh, the products that we want to develop and also the user's mental models. And of course, through this, uh, uh, how to say, the UX toolkit, uh, card sorting, you can uh, gain your insight, the insight from the respondent quickly and easily. And this is the tips for creating the card sorting, especially in our platform. And you need to avoid like keyword matching in the card sorting. So some, sorry, some uh, part like uh, it's quite similar card or quite similar categories, then you, you shouldn't do it. And in as so a one way you can have like the, you can try to figure out the synonyms or employing on parallel exposition structures. And also you need to avoid uh, the obvious one, like you don't need to include, I mean, for the things that already are known by general uh, respondent, for example, like uh, privacy policy or home or any other cars on category. And don't be too obscure, like uh, please make sure that you put categories and cards uh, clear enough. 
I mean, if you think that uh, the cards and category may be is not enough uh, clear for the respondent, then you can add the description for each. So here is that you can uh, pay attention for the card and categories. And for, because in US Army platform, you, we can have like open card sorting, closed card sorting and uh, hybrid card sorting. We actually, we have the limit around one, uh, hundred uh, cards and categories, but still we have the the recommendation number for each. Like for open card sorting, it's recommended to have like thirty to fifty cards, and for closed and hybrid card sorting, it's okay to have more than sixty cards. Also, sorry to interrupt. Uh, yeah. If if we may uh, explain the definition of card sorting methodology for the non researcher audience here. Yeah. Okay. Upper then? The basic one, the, the definition of card sorting method, methodology for a survey. Methodology of the uh, card sorting part. So if you uh, if you talk about the card sorting one, it's more about the quantitative one. That's why we try to, we need to collect uh, actually as much as possible the respondent, which is uh, quite different with the uh, unmoderated, I mean, the previous session. So, yeah, it's more about the quantitative uh, research. And, uh, yeah, and... Uswa, you can go back to the slide uh, where you first introduced card sorting, and there you talked about how you, uh, how to use card sorting, like why do we do card sorting? That is the best place to introduce card sorting because that talks about like you showed there that organizing websites and all. So uh, for people who are wondering what is card sorting, card sorting is basically it's a, a way to gamify a process and, and uh, you know, get the respondents to categorize various options into different groups. Now, there are three types of card sorting, open, hybrid, and closed. So closed is we provide them the categories under which they will need to uh, divide the or categorize the options. Mm -hmm. And then there is open where they will decide what category they want to assign to for the uh, options. And then there is hybrid. So we do provide some options, uh, uh, like some, some categories, but if they feel that uh, an option is not fitting into any of the categories that we have provided, then they can uh, create their own category as well. Yeah. Now, Usually what happens is the categories are like, you know, very important, uh, good to have, but not important and some like not important at all. So this is an example of categories. So we, we can have some other uh, things as well. Like for example, uh, if you are, creating a website, a, a web page rather, of a, let's say a product description page, and you want to know what, uh, what information should come at the top, then this type of sorting helps you decide that. Like product picture is of course, it should come at the very beginning, but what if you are wondering about uh, reviews? product reviews, uh, should it, uh, like, is it very important? Should it come at the top or is it uh, not that important, like less important compared to other things and therefore it should come uh, down below. So this sort of things are decided or can be decided by card sorting. Yeah, uh, actually I'll explain uh, about those that you mentioned already in the test creation part. 
because it's uh i mean it's yeah it's uh but I can say it's quite related. I mean, it will be more easy to understand if you can see directly in the test creation part. Yeah, so this is briefly an introduction. Uh, so I hope whoever asked that question, it is uh, uh, right now they have the basic idea and it is clear. Okay, uh, let's move on. Okay, then. So yeah, uh, let me uh, continue. Like uh, if you want to have the card sorting test, it's better to have like a task duration around 10 to 15 minutes and make sure that you provide like sufficient instruction to the respondent. And uh, you can have, I mean, get, you can get the reason of from the respondent for each uh, card that you put. I mean, you can also use uh, our feature in us for reasoning. And this is the recommendation sample size for card sorting. It's, uh, we we recommend, it, recommend to have uh, 15 to 20 uh, respondent in the card sorting test. Even actually, there's no limitation for the number of the car sorting tests, uh, but still we have the recommendation sample size. Uh, this is the dashboard of the US Army. So you can see if you have already uh, some uh, tests, you can see the detail of the test like uh, test name, the number of the respondent, the type of the uh, card sorting test, like uh, you mentioned before, like they are open, closed, and hybrid card sorting. And also the status like active test, uh, inactive, complete, and draft test. And also the created date and last modified and actions, all the things that you can see from our dashboard. This is the test creation. So there are uh, five uh, sections, say, uh, in our test creation, like test details, categories, and card setup, messages, questionnaire, and share link. So let me explain it one by one. I'll show you also the screenshot of our uh, platform. So here, here uh, the sample that I put here is hybrid car sorting. So in the hybrid car sorting, like you can have your own categories and you can give a chance to the respondent to, uh, how to say, to decide their own categories if they have. So in this part, you can uh, put your name of the test and you can uh, decide your end date and also number of the responses. In this case, uh, you can choose the end date and number of the responses as the things that to stop collecting responses. You can also choose the languages that you want to uh, use in in as a tester view. There are like uh, English and also Bahasa Indonesia and other languages as well. And other uh, demographic collection, like uh, in this part, you can switch of it if you use your own tester and you need to switch uh, of it if you use our panelists, UX Army uh, panelists then you need to uh, switch off it and you will get your demographic uh, data of the respondent from uh, us. You can put also your uh, logo, company logo if you want. And in this part also you can choose your uh, type, type of the card sorting. If you want, you want to choose open card sorting, closed card sorting and hybrid card sorting. In this case, I will show you the example of the hybrid card sorting only. This is not compulsory part, but it will, get, will be good to have it because you can put redirect link to for the respondent if they uh, complete the test, 
for example, you want to get their data related to the incentive things, you can put your incentive link here. And also your, how to say, the, your company web page here for the one who disqualified. And also the, the, the one who tried to take the test, but uh, the quote is full. So you, they can go directly to your web page. This is the categories, the way we uh, set the categories. In this case, you will see uh, this tab only in the closed and hybrid category sort, uh, card sorting. Like uh, you said before that uh, this category in open card sorting, you the researcher uh, should not uh, decide or mention the categories and the respondent can decide their own categories. So yeah, you, you will uh, see this part in the close and hybrid card sorting only. And yeah, uh, there are two ways to have the category. You can put it manually, type it manually here in add manually. And you can also import the categories using CSV files and also the Excel files. And yeah, we have all our also the template, like in the first column, you can put your list uh, category and also the description if you want. So for example, the your uh, you want to put the description for each category, then you can have it here. And it's related to the this uh, right button, like, uh, like uh, if, you, if you switch on this uh, toggle, then you will uh, the respondent will see the description for each category but if you switch on it you shouldn't put for each you can select which category that they, that you want to uh, add a description this one in, uh, include unclear category so like you mentioned before that uh, for example we already have the categories and uh, the respondent also have some categories then they can add but what if uh, some cards do not clear enough and they can categories with the uh, provided categories and also they can make uh, additional categories say so they can put that cards into unclear category and the last button actually for several categories. So sometimes uh, you want to show it in the same order as you create it, but uh, you can uh, put it several categories so each respondent can see it in, diff in different order. And this is card uh, setup. So the same as categories, you can add the cards in two ways, like add card manually, and you can also have the import card using CSV and Excel files. And this is the temp template and the uh, examples. And in the right button, you can have like card description, the same as categories, shuffle cards as well, because in the, in like in the common things like we, make it if we, we make the list of the cards in the good order and we need to solve it to show to the respondent in, in, in not in, a, in the same order. Uh, sort all cards, you need to uh, put this uh, switch on it. I mean, so all respondent uh, cannot complete the task before uh, sorted all uh, cards. And also the last is card position number. So you can, is, if you switch on it, you can see the position number of each card in the, how to say, in the online report as well as in the downloaded report. And this is the new feature, actually not really new feature. I mean, we developed this new feature. And uh, as for reasoning for each card, so you can get the reason of the respondent uh, why they put that card in specific category. You can put it as a compulsory and also the optional or turn us 
to, uh, I mean, uh, no reason. I mean, we recommend actually to put it as an uh, optional. So if it's quite like important, then respondent can put the reason for the cards, but they can skip it. They can skip their uh, reasoning part if it's unnecessary. Oh, before going to the messages part, if you guys have any question, then you can deliver it. Okay, then let me continue. <clears throat> Uh, for the messages, we have four kind of messages. In total, there are three actually for grading messages, instruction, and thank you message. And actually for these uh, messages, you can, uh, how to say, you can edit it, you can customize based on your need. And in the part of the screener question, there are, sorry, oh, for the questionnaire, there are three types of the questionnaire in our platform, like screener question, and pre-study questionnaire, and post-study questionnaire. So yeah, uh, I think all of us already know that screener question to, I mean, to screen out the respondent uh, who do not, this, who, who disqualified, I mean, to not uh, appropriate with our criteria in our research. So we can, if you have a specific criteria, then you can use this as screener questions. And yeah, like uh, in this part, you can uh, switch on the toggle if you want to use screener question or pre-study question or post-study questionnaire. And there are several uh, shuffle op options. For example, in the screener question, if you have more than uh, one screener question, you can choose like shuffle questions. And you can also shuffle images if you have the image in, in this question. And also shuffle options for the cho your choices. And the most important part in the screener question related to this part, if you can see my... And you can click, you need to click a uh, screen out if you uh, want to disqualify for this, the one who uh, select this uh, choice. And this part, if you want to add the, the question. For pre and post study questionnaire, it's quite similar with the screener question actually, like shuffle options, shuffle images, and shuffle questions. But in case of pre-study questionnaire and post-study questionnaire, it's not like a compulsory one. So if uh, any question that you let the, how to say, the respondent skip, then you can uh, have this, this uh, uh, part. In the Part of, of launch, you before launch the test, we recommend you to preview the test. And you can see your, the previous version from this button. And we recommend you also to duplicate the test because be, before, like before, uh, after launch the test, you cannot edit it anymore. So please uh, duplicate the test uh, before uh, launch the test. So you can go for preview, duplicate the test, and then launch the test. And as a note that for this card sorting, you can, the respondent can only use the computer device, not, uh, not uh, the smartphone or phone device. This is the view that you will see for preview version, like the messages. And then if you have like the screener question, the respondent will go to this part. This is the card list and also the category. And if you launch the test, you will 
uh, see this 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 view and you can copy the link and share to your respondent so yeah before going to the live demonstration if you guys have any question then please No, it's it. Is that okay to to go to live demonstration? Then yeah, let me start. This is the the test that I have provided for you all. And yeah, we just I I just uh put the live the name of the test, the site, the the end date, and also the number of the responses. Languages we have four like English, Bahasa Indonesia, Chinese, Simplified Chinese, and Traditional Chinese. And because uh, I'll use my own tester, then I want to uh, switch on the demographic collection. And this is the type of the card sorting. I want to have a hybrid card sorting. And the test uh, specific web page, I put the link for the incentive and I put the company web page to uh, promote and to rebranding. And for the categories, I just have my list of the categories I'll import. And put Actually, if you don't have that template, you can download the template, the uh, sample of the files, the template of uh, putting the categories. Uh, yeah, after that, you will have this kind of things. And if you want to add like unclear categories and card description, like this, in this, in this part, I put the description for leisure and entertainment categories, but not for another category. So it's, it's okay if you want to put only for several categories. And also I want to switch on for the software categories, then it's okay. I think that's all for categories and setup. I want to import also the cards. Yeah, for example, here, just have it and want to switch on the description. And, you know, like you can see the description for each card. In this case, I put description for each. Yeah. Shuffle cards, like I have explained before that sometimes we make it done, you know, in a good order. So we need to shuffle it and short all cards. So make sure that all cards will be uh, sorted by the respondent and also card a position number. And this reasoning, because I want, I need uh, the reason for some of the uh, cards, then I will put optional. This is for the card setup, message, questionnaire, just have the questionnaire, one questionnaire. And because it's uh, need, it's in a good order, I want to have the same order as the respondent C letter, then I will switch on the, this part. This pre-study questionnaire, I don't want to the, let's say the, Respondents keep it and also this part. So for screener question, like if if the respondent choose this choice, then they will be disqualified. And share link. I will show you the preview one. Copy.
is things that we will see. For these things, we'll, you, we will go to directly to launch the test. So Melissa will help me to let's say. I've shared the link to the chat, Melissa. If you can share your screen, then show the user's point of view. Okay, I'm sharing my screen now. So um, everyone will have to go through this um, like details collection page so you can like collect their basic demographics. So um, here we have like, you know, the card sorting page and I've already tried to put in a few um, items. So if you see here, um, there's this icon. This is where um, the testers would have to click to put in their reasoning. So in this case, um, it's set to optional. So there's no prompt to put in the reason. And um, even if I open it, I can still leave it empty. So I'm just going to sort a few more items. Um, uh, Dana, I am sharing my screen. I, I think you might have to toggle between um, like my screen and Uswa's screen if she's still screen sharing. Cannot see your screen as well, actually. Okay, let me um. I, I can and... see your screen, Melissa. Huh, those okay, who, let me um uh, just who, try. Those who can't see it, just click on view options and beside share, yeah. the screen sharing thing, and yeah, you will be able to see. Okay, um, if everyone can um, see my screen now, I'll, I'll just quickly repeat what I mentioned earlier. Um, so this is the, the hybrid card sort. So, you know, these are some of the categories that the test started with. And I've already put in some um, items into some of the categories. And because um, reasoning was set to optional, so we have this icon here which um, if you click on it, this is where like, you would be able to input your reason for putting the card into a certain category. And again, because it's optional, um, you, can, you can leave it blank. Yeah, if, it's, if it's set to compulsory, every time you, you place a card, the dialog will appear and you have to type in a reason um, and before you continue. 
Yeah. So I'm just going to put in a few more items. And since this is hybrid, I'm going to create some categories for um, the stuff that I don't see a, a category for. So like for this one, I'm just going to call it a uh, charity. And then um let's say this item I don't see a a category for it and I, I can't think of one, then I can just place it in the unclear category of things that I um you know I'm not sure how to group the item. Yeah. And that's my reason for placing it there. So I sorted all the items. So I'm just going to submit the test and then uh, Uso can show us what it looks like in the report. And uh, here are like some follow-up questions um, for the cut sort. So okay. Okay, then I think it's done for the live demonstration. It's just like the specific way speech related. So we direct the respondent to specific uh, link to get some data. So I'll continue to show you the, the report, including like online report and also the downloaded report. Okay, this is, let me let me continue. Thank you, Melissa. Anyway, to show us the user's point of view. This is the report that you will show. So to to get your report, you can go to the dashboard, and like what I have explained before, that you can uh, click the button here. There are three button in action actually, and the first one is for report. And you can see like the for the complete task, the report button, and also the few details test is uh, activated. So you can click on it. If you click, then there are uh, three part for the reports. I mean, online report, like overview, analysis, and the questionnaire. In the case of the overview, you will see like the first total submissions the number of the respondent and the number of the respondent who complete the test. I mean, which means uh, for four of seven respondents, just a screen out and three of the respondent uh, get the complete the, the test. You can see also the gender and also the percentage, uh, the countries, the percentage, the percentage for each country is related to the number of the respondent and the uh, time taken for the overall test completion, like maximum average and minimum uh, time taken. And also you, you, if you put, if you add uh, unclear categories, then you will see uh, the percentage of the card that have been sorted into unclear categories. And in case of the uh, open, uh, 
how to say open uh, card sorting you will see this part also so you can see the maximum number of the categories that have been created by respond by the respondent and the minimum number of the categories that have been created by the respondent but if uh yeah for the analysis there are some part like there are six uh, part participant until the similarity matrix before going to that part uh, we have the feature for filters you can filter the countries the gender operating system and type device and in case of filters this is the listing of the sorry the participant i mean you can see the detail of the participant like how many number of the participant, participant, first participant until the seventh participant, the gender, nationality, the complete time complete, uh, time taken, test completion, like complete screen out. Actually, we have one more like abandoned uh, respondent. You can see also here if it's there. And the total card sort, for example, in the in this uh, P7. You can see that 77, which means all cards sorted by this respondent, and also the details of the device. That's for the participant part. And in the analysis of a card, you can see the list of the cards, and in this, this is the category. In this part, you, you can see the detail how many categories. I mean, these cards that have been grouped to uh, how many categories for example correction pan uh, already grouped by respondent in one categories and also the for example in the other adhesive tools have two categories which means uh, there can be two respondent uh, categories into two categories It is analysis in case of the categories. This is the list of the categories. And also you can see the number of the cards. For example, like in unclear category that there are two cards and also stationary, there are 32 cards and so on. This is the result matrix. So this is the like a table in this vertical one, this is the list of the cards, and the horizontal one is the list of the uh, categories. So for example, in the correction pan, there are 100% of the participant group uh, this, I mean, categorize this correction pan into stationary. So you can see the number of the respondent and also the percentage. For the next is uh, categorization, categorization uh, confidence. Like you can see the list of the cards and confidence of in sorting. It's showing high and number of time plus in unclear category. In this case, there's no, there's no of this card that have been categorized in unclear category. And you can see also the journey of each card. For example, if you click this uh, journey, you can see this, this, this view, and you can see which participant that choose this uh, correction pan into a stationary. So participant, detail of the participant, number of the steps, and also categorization journey. This is the new feature actually in our platform, the similarity matrix. So you can see each uh, percentage. So for example, in this part, like 84% of the respondent, in, in this case, total respondent, in this case, 80% uh, of uh, 17 respondent, just group uh, correction pen and uh, cutter and refill in one or the same in the similar group. And this is the last part report for the questionnaire. Uh, same uh, shown in dashboard, there are three. So a screener question, pre-study questionnaire and post-study questionnaire. You can have the graph 
of the answer based on the number of the respondent. You can also download this, the graph and you will we will uh, show or give you also the this kind of uh, table like the percentage or and the number of the responses for each choice. Yeah, this is the same thing for the post study questionnaire. That's all for the online uh, report. And what I can say for the downloaded uh, report, all the report that you have shown in this part can be downloaded. So you can download all the data here and we can, we you will get it in the Excel files. For example, in this raw data, you can have the detail of the participant, card index, card level until the uh, sorted position for each uh, card. In this case, you can have the downloaded version for overview, the detail of the participant until the details of the each uh, questionnaire like this. So yeah, I think that's all from uh, my side. I mean, me and Melissa. So if you guys have any question related to the card sorting in our platform, please. Give it back to Harris. Thank you. Thank you, Elspa. Uh, is there any question from the audience for the card sorting from UX Army tool? If not, then uh, maybe Soro, you can come the cut sorting uh, within the alchemer versus yeah. the one here so um, most of you know that, that we also have subscription of alchemer which is a questionnaire scripting tool and they also have option for card sorting so uh, yeah there, there are some differences Overall, it is more or less same, but there are some differences. So uh, let me share my screen. So uh, these are like just the some of the differences between the two so advantages of ux army over alchemer it is only about uh, the reasons so in ux army they the respondents they have the option to give the reason or their thinking behind why they are categorizing a certain option under a certain category in uh, Alchemer, we don't have that option. We do have an option for them to put in comments, but that is at an overall level, not for each option, uh, why they are categorizing a certain option. We can't ask that. So that is a big uh, drawback for Alchemer. So if you are doing a qualitative study and reasons are very important for you, then definitely UX Army is better in that matter. Alchemer, uh, it has some advantages as well. One of that is that it is uh, the design is more user-friendly. So right now you saw the design of uh, UX Army, uh, the card sorting part. And you saw how it, the card sorting categories appear as a uh, like column headers and the options appear as rows and then you can drag and drop each of the option to categories. However, what uh, you might have noticed is that if there are lots of categories, then you will need to scroll through the categories to drop the option in the appropriate uh, category. Uh, let me show you how Alchemer appears. So this is a screenshot of uh, how Alchemer appears in 
uh, like uh, when they are doing the card sorting. So in Alchemer, the options, first of all, they're, uh, so they're randomized and they will appear one by one. They are not uh, shown all of them together. So one of them will appear and then they can uh, simply like drag and drop to the appropriate category. And the categories appear together. So they have like an upfront view of all the categories and they can choose which category they want to drop the card in. So then they don't have to scroll through uh, to find the appropriate category. So that is one big advantage in terms of user friendliness. The other uh, advantage that Alchemer provides is the flexibility in uh, the number of cards that a respondent need to sort before he can he or she can move on to next question. Now, uh, at the very beginning of uh, the presentation, uh, so Uswa had said that you can even have like 60, 70 cards, right? Now think from the perspective of a, a respondent, how tedious it can be to sort uh, 50 or 60 cards, especially if we don't even give them the option to move on to the next question. Uh, like if, if they are sorting, let's say 10 cards and they are already bored, but they can't move on because we don't. Uh, we are not giving them that option. In Alchemer, however, that option is there. So we can fix the number of cards that is uh, mandatory to be sorted before they can move on. And we can uh, choose whatever number. Is, uh, we, it can be five cards, it can be 10 cards, or we can uh, keep it like they need to sort all cards. So that's up to us. So for small sample size, for uh, studies which are primarily qualitative, which is uh, where we mostly use UX Army, it is still fine because we pay them heavily. So it is uh, expected that they complete their tasks, but where it, uh, when it comes to uh, quantitative studies where we have large sample size, 1000 or may maybe 500, whatever, where the respondents are not incentivized or if they're incentivized, uh, not that much, then they don't have that, uh, you know, uh, motivation to sort through lots of cards. If you have small number of cards, let's say 10 cards, it's fine. But what if you have lots of cards, 20, 30? It can be tedious for the respondents. So Alchemer, uh, that, that option of Alchemer, it works in favor of uh, like providing relief to the respondent. And uh, one more thing, this is not an advantage or disadvantage, but uh, I mean, UX Army recommends their sample size to be 15, 20, like that. Whereas Alchemer is out and out a quantitative questionnaire scripting tool. And uh, there, there's like no restriction of uh, sample size or anything. The bigger, the better, basically. Yeah, that is all from my end. Thank you, Saur. Any any questions about regarding the card sorting features uh, in Alchemer? Oh, from your ex army. If not, then uh, thank you, Saur, for sharing. Uh, Uswa, Melissa, and the UX Army team, thank you for today's session. Uh, join us uh, next week for three testing also from UX Army tool. Okay, thank you everyone.
we can uh, wrap up this session now. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.